today's video we're going to be tearing into the Ranger. We got lots of parts to install, so let's get to it. channel everyone uh, today working on the Ranger again we're gonna be digging into the passenger side valve cover um, coolant's already been drained got the parts ordered for this thing um, while we're waiting on parts it might as well get stuff done that uh, I have so let's just start digging into this thing all right all right before we get started first thing I did was lower the vehicle because I had the front end jacked up all high so I just brought it down a few notches on the jack stands Still got the jack underneath there supporting it. Got my Home Depot bucket out because I didn't know if it was going to fit. Actually, I need to get back there because it's starting to drip. Drip cooling again. It should fit under there. Yeah, we're good. All right. Now we can get to work. Oh my gosh, there's so much stuff in the way over here. This is going to be not fun. Let's see here. We got. Well, we can take this off. I can get out of the way. This has got to come out of the way. Got this hose. If I can get it. Come on. It. All right, so we got this hose off. This hose off. Let's see. This is good where it's at. Um, that's good where it's at. Probably need to. That should be good where it's at. As long as I can get to the hardware, I can get it on and off. Um, man, this is tight back here. This is super tight. This is gonna be not fun getting to some of this hardware. I think the hardest ones to get to are gonna be these back ones. So we got one there. I got one back there. I can feel that. I can get to that one. I can get to this one. These two in the front aren't hard at all. And that one I can see. So I think I'm gonna start in the back, we're going to get this back one first because that seems like it's the most difficult one to get to. And probably, oh yeah, that's where it's leaking. Look at all that oil. Alright guys, I'll show you what I'm fighting here. I have to get back down in here. It's a blind look, a blind bolt. I can't see it. But I've got it loose. It's definitely loose, and it was it was already loose to start out. Uh, that's why it was leak. That's why it was leaking. The same thing. It was on this driver side. The back bolt was just was just loose from poor work. So let me continue on with this. Okay, valve cover's loose, now I just gotta wrangle it out of there somehow, so I'm gonna put you over here while I fight it. Hopefully this doesn't give me too much trouble pulling out here. There's definitely a lot of junk in the way though. Let's see if I can... I need to unplug these injectors. Tight fit over here, 
two, three. I'm gonna unplug these part plug wires. They're in the way. All right, I'll do that. I can come out of the way. What else we got here? This can come out right here. I think I need to do these injectors. I think if I can just squeeze it out on one end, it should pop out. Ooh. Whoever worked in this truck before, it was a, you know what. I can't stand when people do this piss poor work. It's just annoying as hell. Yeah, like everything's loose. Like who worked on this? Whatever. That bolt just fell to the ground, but it fell in the bucket actually. I think I need to undo these heater lines. Awesome, don't want to do that, but I guess I have to. <clears throat> That's such a tight fit, guys, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous how tight this is. I got it though. <sighs> All right, we got it out guys. And once again, I'm proven, I proved to myself why I don't let people work on my cars. So we had to, if you guys see here, let me see here. So this. This right here, these are heater hose lines. Uh, I unhooked them. Sorry if you can't see, it's just. Uh... So here's the uh, heater hose lines. I unhooked them right here, and I had to pull this bracket back out of the way. Well, this bracket was held on by two bolts, or a nut and a bolt. There's the nut, and then the bolt, it fell into the bucket, but I, the bolt came off as well. I didn't have to use any tools to take them off. They were not tight at all. This one was just flopping around. The other one was barely even hand tight. So, I mean, who does work like that and doesn't tighten up all the hardware? And then half the hardware for the valve cover was loose as well. That back bolt where it was leaking, loose. That's why it was leaking. I mean, I just, I don't understand people when they do stuff when they work on cars, especially if it's a shop that does that. That's just piss poor work. I mean, do the job the right way, guys. Anyways, show you the valve cover. It's over here on top of the parts washer. I'm gonna give it a decent cleaning. I gotta get all these parts off, but you can see where it was leaking right there. Plain as day. There's the evidence. You guys see that? Let me get my light. All right, here you go. You'll see where it was leaking. You see where all that oil's getting past the seal right there? That's where it's leaking. If you look all up here, see how the seal doesn't have any oil on it? It's all back here. It's leaking right there. It's from not tightening down your hardware uh, properly. So the same thing was like that on the driver's side. If you haven't seen that video, just go watch that. You'll, you'll see the same thing. That's why it was leaking. And I put a new gasket set. This is a new gasket set on this truck. Uh, this is the same set that I'm about to put on, but it was just done poorly. So I'm going to clean all this up. I'll spare you all that. Um, I'll get you updated when I get the valve cover back on and uh, everything back together because you saw it come off. You don't need to see it go back on. Okay, so I got the valve cover all cleaned up, guys. Um, it's down here on the ground, just letting it dry out. Yeah, it's dry now. But we're not going to put this back together yet because with the valve cover off, I have really good access to the spark plugs. So I wanna replace the spark plugs. So what I'm gonna do is just, I got the cam and everything covered up with some rags so nothing gets in there. 
and uh, I'll get back to this in a few days when the spark plugs get here and then um, I'll put the valve cover back on. Um, I will get the valve cover prepped, I'll get the new gasket and everything in there, but uh, I'll get back to this in a few days, so I guess I'll see you then. Alright everyone, it's a few days later. Um, you saw in the first little bit of the video, we uh, tore into the valve cover. We got the valve cover off on the driver on the driver side on the passenger side. The driver side, um, I did that a few weeks back, probably over a month ago. I did that. I was gonna do an oil change and all that stuff, and then I realized I can't put the valve cover back on until I get the spark plugs in. So I got my parts order in. All the parts have shown up. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get spark plugs installed on that passenger side. The driver side I can do a little later. I might just do it all at once, but. Uh, Let's get the spark plugs installed on the passenger side, and then we can get that valve cover back in there. So let's get to it. You can see here we got the thermostat housing off. We got to clean up that surface, but here's the uh, the valve cover or the valve cover, the head right here. Um, you can see I have the valve cover off. Uh -oh, I just need to clean up the uh, the surface where the valve cover goes. But first, we're going to take these spark plug spark plugs out. You can see it's a really tight fit, especially that back one. And we're gonna replace uh, these spark plugs first thing. Um. Like, I can't get this back here. It's so tight, guys. How am I supposed to replace the spark plug? <sighs> oh, that's good. I saw that. I got some something fell down on the head down here. Just finding stuff everywhere. Oh, look at that. Yeah, that's supposed to be down in there. Not. That's been in there for a while too. It is oil soaked. I swear to God, man, whoever worked on this one will punch him in the head. But as you can see, you see that cam, guys? Can you see the pitting on that cam? I'm sure you can, right there. It is all pitted on the lobe here. I mean, there's nothing I can do about that. I'm not pulling this cam out. It's just going to stay the way it is. I mean, it's a work truck. All right. I might be able to come into the wheel well here and get uh, that spark plug wire and spark plug out. At least I can see it and get a, uh, hopefully get a better hand on it. So let's try that. I got it. That worked. So what I did guys is I got it underneath there and I uh, I got a pry bar through the uh, fender well down there and I got under the lip of the boot and I pried it up off the spark plug and it came right off. So spark plug wires are now out. Thank goodness. That was a pain in the ass. So let me get these out of the way. Now I can get the spark plugs out. Man, this is a pain. All right, I got the right size socket now. At least I'm pretty sure it fits my new spark plugs and I'm fairly sure it's the socket I used to pull out. I pulled out a spark plug on the driver's side and it was horrible. I mean, wait till you see these spark plugs, guys. I, that, that, that was the easiest one to get to. I can imagine these other ones that are hard to get to are probably worse. There we go. So, check out that spark plug, look at that. They didn't put any anti-seize. They're Ford Motorcraft, Platinums. And look at that gap. Look how big that gap is. Way too big. You see that gap? That gap is way too big. These are supposed to be gapped at point 054. Let's see where they're at. Point. All right, so we're supposed to be over here. Point, point 054. So we should be about right here where my fingernail's at on it. We're way over here. We're at point oh eight four. Victory, guys. I got the back spark plug out. That was such a pain in the ass. It is like, I'll show you. Such a pain in the ass. If you guys, I don't know, you'll be able to see up in there. If you could see right, it's right there. If I can get it to shine. See it? See that little shine, shiny part right there? There we go. Right there is where that spark plug is, and there's no room. Literally no room. The, the 
most pain in the ass spark plug ever. That's what I had to use to get it out. I just had to use an adapter to use my bigger ratchet, break it loose, run it out a little bit, run it back in because the back of the, the uh, ratchet was hitting the uh, the heater box or whatever that is, air conditioning heater box thing in my bobber. I don't know. And uh, plus it's the threads are all rusty, so that's good. That makes it easier. Anyways, um, let's uh, gap some spark plugs and get some new ones in here. We're gonna do these three spark plugs. We're gonna gap them up and put some anti-seize and then throw them on the car. For those of you who don't know, how to, don't know how to gap spark plugs, they're supposed to come pre-gapped, but they never are, especially when they don't have a collar on them. They'll bounce around in the box and they'll close the gap up. Spark plug gapping tool and some anti-seize. Normally, I need to get some of the copper. I like the copper better, but this is what I got. So these are supposed to be at point. 0.54 and they are I tell you this right now right out of the box this one's on the money it's right at 0.54 if you can see that can you guys see that this is right on the money at 0.54 right out of the box so that's awesome don't need to gap that one you definitely want to check them though guys 0.54 man that is like between 0.53 and 0.54 not going to touch it same with this one pretty much right on the money. It's right between 0.53 and 0.54. Not gonna touch it. So we're gonna throw a little anti seize on this. This just makes it easier to get your spark plugs out later, guys. Whoever did the, uh, those last set of spark plugs didn't put any anti seize and they were not fun to break loose. I thought I was gonna break those three spark plugs. You can see I'm not gooping on a bunch on here, guys. You don't need a ton. You just need enough to. Prevent it from galling it up and seizing up. All right. And now I got a little bit down here. I need to get that off. I got paper towel right here. I got a little bit past the threads. You don't want that down there because it will get up there and it will foul out your spark plugs. All right, we're good. These three have any C's, let's get them in. Okay, making progress, guys. We got, um, you can see here, try not to block your light. We got the valve cover back in, spark plugs are in, spark plug wires are plugged in. Um, I gotta work on the thermostat housing and everything now because I need to get that in there before I start buttoning up all this other stuff that's on top of the valve cover. Uh, Cause if I button this up, then it's gonna uh, impede my, <clears throat> my uh, access to uh, this up here. So let me, uh, I need to clean this surface up a little bit. I got some thousand grit. I'm just gonna smooth it out just to make sure I get a good seal on that uh, O-ring that sits there on the thermostat housing. Uh, let me go get some parts and I'll show you what I got. Okay, so here's the uh, hoses I got. They're just some Dacos. I didn't get the Fomocos, the Dacos and the Fomocos. It all rhymes, so they should all be good, right? Uh, anyways, I got some, some Daco. I got a uh, lower radiator hose and upper radiator hose. And uh, we're replacing that plastic thermostat housing with this nice metal unit. It's an SKP unit. It's like 30, not even $35. It comes with two new sensors, has a thermostat in it and it has all the gaskets. It's already fully assembled, I just have to drop it in there. So, so um, let's go over to the truck and get this stuff installed. Okay, as you guys can see, I took the thermostat housing off where the thermostat sits actually. And that should give me plenty, plenty of clearance in here now. And then I can get the thermostat reinstalled after I get this in here. All right, bolts are clean. Gotta throw some anti-seize on them and drop them down. 
Okay, I completely covered these bolts in anti seize all the way, the whole shaft, because I got to fit in there and it's two different metals and you don't want these to seize up because they were seized up before. Okay, I'm gonna get back with you guys when I have everything buttoned up. I gotta do a low radiator hose still. You don't need to see that. And I just gotta like vacuum out the air box and put a new filter in. Okay, everybody, it's about uh, an hour later or so. I got new air filter in. I got everything put back together. Um, all that's missing is the cover, the plastic cover that goes over the intake manifold, but you don't need that to run. Battery's hooked up. All things, uh, only thing I haven't done, I haven't done an oil change and the fuel filter, transmission filter, but I'm gonna do that stuff tomorrow. I got everything replaced that it needs to run. New spark plugs. I did the valve cover gasket. I've got all the hoses hooked back up. It's got, I put two gallons of coolant in it. I'm gonna have to go get more coolant. It still needs a little bit more, but uh, it has enough to run. I'll just run it for a couple minutes. It'll be fine. And what else? I think the biggest thing that's going to make a difference on how it runs is going to be the um, spark plugs because the spark plugs that were in there were no bueno. Um, they're over there, the old ones, uh, you already saw it earlier in the video, they were all gapped way wrong. Um, whoever put them in there last didn't gap them properly, so I'm surprised uh, it ran as well as it did, uh, it, even though when I drove it last it was kind of stuttering and just it didn't run that well. So. We're going to start up and see how it does, so let me get you over here. I think I'm just going to put you up here, guys. Alright guys, one last check. That's it, that's on. Everything looks plugged in. Hooked up, plugged in. All the vacuum lines are in. Everything looks alright. runs so much better guys I mean it's idling nice and smooth yeah this runs way better now yeah and that ticking noise that I heard it was a um, it used to have a really bad tick here in the back and it was a spark plug this back spark plug wasn't in all the way I tell you whoever worked in this truck did a half-assed job before it's nice and quiet now I don't hear any weird noises yeah, it sounds nice. This thing sounds good. Awesome. Runs nice and smooth. It's nice and quiet. 
So yeah, I think that's uh, that'll be it for today. That was a few days worth of work. Um, I think I'll do it for this video actually. Uh, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna end the video here. I'll get this one posted up, and then uh, tomorrow I'm gonna come out here and I'm gonna do the fuel filter. I'm gonna drop the transmission uh, pan and put new fluid and uh, a new filter in the transmission with a new pan gasket. And then uh, I'm also going to um, do the uh, brakes. So we'll do the brakes as well. Should be able to knock that all out tomorrow. I thought I was gonna be able to get most of it done today, but those spark plugs on the passenger side, I tell you, they're a pain in the ass on these trucks. When you get that big four liter crammed into this tiny engine bay, there's no room to work. Um, but we got it done. It sounds really good. I'm happy with how it's running. Um, and on that note, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.